Hello everybody, Michelle here with Michelle Beckner Family Wellness. Uh, if you are new here, then welcome. I am Michelle, as I said. Um, I help moms like you figure out and optimize their diet and lifestyle, reduce their stress, all those things that come with not only having a baby, but having a sensitive baby. So I help moms kind of figure out their stuff so that baby can feel better. So today, um, we're going to be talking about the immune system, which is something that it seems like everybody's talking about these days, right? In the global pandemic and with COVID going around, our immune system is always super, super important, but it's getting um, the attention that it might, it so rightly deserves, right? We're all trying the best we can to support our immune systems and do what we can to support our immune systems to keep us and our family and our friends and our world healthy. Um, but there's more to our immune system than just, um, than just keeping us healthy. I mean, that I guess is what it is, but I want to dig into it a little bit more and talk about how your immune system and specifically your baby's immune system, um, why that's so important, especially if your baby has, um, skin issues like eczema or, um, just like red, itchy, scaly, angry looking skin, um, your immune system plays a big role in that. Or maybe if your baby has bloody or mucousy diapers, we're going to be talking about what kind of role the immune system plays in those sorts of um, in those sorts of symptoms. Okay, um, but really quickly, first I want to explain a little bit about what the immune system is and what it does, and what inflammation is and what it does, and kind of how they're connected. Okay, so um, the immune system is what keeps our bodies healthy, right? So its job is to fight off um, basically anything it sees as a threat to our bodies. Our immune system will go and attack it. And one of the ways it does this is by causing inflammation. And you might hear about inflammation a lot. I talk about it a lot. I'm always like, anti-inflammatory this, anti-inflammatory that, right? <laughs> but like, what exactly does that mean? What exactly is inflammation? Why do we want to reduce it, okay? Um, so your immune system, like I said, one of the ways that it, um, it fights these like foreign invaders is by creating inflammation. So inflammation, believe it or not, is actually a good thing. And we want our immune system to, um, to create inflammation in our bodies because it helps us heal. It is actually our immune system's natural response to healing. So um, you get a cut. It gets maybe a little warm, it gets red, it gets swollen. That's everything that our body needs to fight off any infection so our cut doesn't get infected, okay? So that's one example. Um, but if you get like any sort of illness or injury or anything, there's going to be some um, inflammation going on around it, okay? Um, and that is acute inflammation and that's great and that's what we want because that's what protects our body. Our immune system's doing its job, everything's good, right? Um, so that's what I call, or what is called acute inflammation, good. What's not good is chronic inflammation. So that's when it's sticking around for way longer than it needs to. So your baby um, or you, like whoever's got chronic inflammation, um, it means the inflammation isn't just there to help protect your body, body heals and it goes away, okay? Chronic inflammation means it's sticking around for a long time. Um, it could be widespread throughout your body and it is the root of all disease. So things like and not saying that your baby's gonna end up with dementia when they're older because they have inflammation now, <laughs> but, um, but it is the root of all disease. So um, things like asthma and allergies are things that we're talking about here, right? Um, um, and dementia, I said, diabetes, all this kind of stuff, at cancer at the root of it um, is in, in even COVID. Um, the, what, I mean, it's a very complicated disease that I'm not going to pretend to understand because I know medical doctors are just starting to learn how to understand it. But inflammation is a big part of helping your body fight off COVID, right? So, um, so inflammation is kind of the root of all disease. So we don't want our bodies to be filled and stuck with this chronic inflammation because it can just um, kind of snowball and become, um, so it starts out as just a little bit of inflammation now with like maybe some mucousy poops and then it can turn into full-blown um, food allergies or um, asthma or eczema, like that atopic triad that I talked about um, a while back. Um, so we want to get to the root of the inflammation now. Is that making all sense? And hopefully I'm not scared. I'm not saying that just because your baby has mucousy poops now, like it's, 
he's he he or she is a goner and they're going to end up with all these things okay it's not it's not like if this then that but we still want to make sure that we're calming the inflammation and supporting our baby's body the best we can okay so hopefully give me some thumbs up or whatever if you guys understand um, what i explained about the immune system and inflammation and kind of so inflammation is your immune system's natural response for healing acute inflammation good chronic inflammation not good okay so that's what we want to fight um, when it comes to, to the immune system, um, what, what can cause chronic inflammation is when you have an overreactive immune system. So your immune system is just like in constant fight mode, fight, 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 causing inflammation over and over and over again. So we do not want like an overreactive, dysregulated immune system. We want it to kick into gear when we need it to kick into gear, and we want it to kind of lay low when we need it to lay low, right? So we don't want it to be, um, we don't want it to be an over um, in overdrive. We don't want it to overreact to little things. So that might be what you're dealing with now with your baby with like, you feel like your baby's sensitive to everything. Like the tiniest little thing might cause um, this huge cascade of inflammation and symptoms and things like that. So that tells me their, their immune system is in hyperdrive and we need to calm the immune system. Okay. And we do that by reducing inflammation. So we want our immune systems to be responsive and working well, but we don't want them to be overreactive and kind of going haywire and causing this widespread chronic inflammation. Does that make sense? So if you guys are watching, if you can, let me know what kind of symptoms you guys are dealing with. I mentioned at the beginning, um, like any sort of skin issues, um, like eczema or like just maybe you don't have like an eczema diagnosis, but your baby's skin is like really itchy or inflamed or just like angry or red or whatever. Um, let me know if you're dealing with that or some other symptoms of inflammation. Certainly mucusy poops can be a symptom of inflammation and definitely bloody poops. Um, you know, there's obviously other things going on, but um, if you have, if your baby has mucusy or bloody poops, then we certainly want to work on supporting the immune system and reducing inflammation. Even things like sneezing and congestion and, and things like that could be signs of, um, of uh, inflammation in the body. Okay, so if you want, if you can, if you're not don't have your hands full nursing a baby or whatever. <laughs> Let me know what symptoms you guys are dealing with. Um, okay, so I'm talking about we want to support the immune system. We want to calm inflammation. That's kind of like the same thing, right? So by calming inflammation, we're supporting the immune system. And we do that through anti-inflammatory foods. And so you can easily just Google, like, what are some anti-inflammatory foods? And, you know, I don't need to list them all off for you. It's you can probably guess like lots of good, healthy, colorful plant foods. Omega-3 fats are one of my favorites. So look up and herbs and spices. They get forgotten a lot. And those are super, super powerhouses for, um, for fighting inflammation. But also something that's really, really important for fighting inflammation is your lifestyle. So stress. And yes, your stress affects baby, okay? Um, so food and lifestyle are all really, really important things to address when we're talking about calming um, calming inflammation. Okay. Um, so, and I, I go into this in a lot of detail in the baby skin solution course. So I'm doing the free mini course again in September. So I'll, when I'm done with this, I'll drop a link in the comments if you want to get on the, um, to sign up for the free mini course. So you can be like the first to know when it's starting in September. Um, but I go into a lot of detail on this right now. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on like how to combat inflammation and calm the immune system and everything today. Um, if you have specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. I have a few questions that I'm going to get to at the end, um, and I'll answer those. But now I just, just want to get you guys to understand why supporting your immune system is really important, what it does, and some like just really quick, easy things we can do to support the immune system, okay? But definitely leave any comments you have in, or questions you have in the comments if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, and I will get back to you, okay? Um, if anybody here watching, if their baby has skin issues um, and they're, they're, they're either using topical steroids or have used topical steroids, like cortisol, hydrocortisone, whether over the counter or prescribed by a doctor, um, raise your hand because I want to talk about them just like really quickly. Um, so basically cortisol, right? Hydrocortisone is hydrolyzed cortisol. It's, it's cortisol, which is our stress hormone. Okay. So it's part of our immune system's, uh, response when, um, 
when there's inflammation is it releases cortisol, our stress hormone. And then cortisol actually does a really, really great job of reducing inflammation. So that's why when you have, um, when your baby has like an eczema flare up, put some hydrocortisol cream on it or some kind of um, steroid cream that maybe the doctor prescribed, that'll calm it right down, right? Because cortisol reduces inflammation. So, okay, that's good, right? Um, and that's with anything, like if you have asthma or, um, or any, you know, I'm trying to think, all I'm thinking of is like lung stuff, I guess, because COVID is, <laughs> is going on right now. Um, but like inhaling steroids, right, that'll reduce the inflammation in your lungs, allow you to breathe a little bit better, right? Um, so cortisol can be really helpful in like a quick fix reducing inflammation. Um, what we don't want to do is be on any sort of steroid, like we're talking about with um, topical steroids, cortisol or something like that, um, on your baby. Because over time, your immune system, so your body is getting exogenous, which means cortisol, exogenous cortisol, which means cortisol from like outside of the body, right? It's getting this cortisol from outside the body. So the immune system's like, oh, you know, I don't need to make cortisol. We've got all this cortisol. We're good. So the immune system kind of shuts down, relaxes a little bit, um, doesn't need to do as much of its job, making cortisol, reducing inflammation, that kind of stuff. And then um, if you start to get off of the steroids, especially if you just one day all of a sudden stop using it completely and you don't wean off of it slowly, um, your baby will probably have a major flare up because now your immune system's kind of like kicking back, like whatever, you know, we don't need to make cortisol and reduce inflammation. We've got it coming to us. It's cool. And then it stops and all of a sudden inflammation up the wazoo, right? We don't want the ha that to happen. So we need to be really careful when we're using, um, topical steroids. Like I said, they can be really, really helpful if your baby's super itchy and uncomfortable and you kind of need to get over that hump, but you need to make sure you talk to your doctor about weaning off of them. You need to make sure that when you start them, you have a plan so that it's not a long-term solution. And by long-term, I mean more than like a week or two. Um, and yeah, you need to be aware of like what it's doing, right? Like why it's working and why it's not really a long-term solution. So, um, they can be great to get over the hump, but what can we do to like actually make, have a long-term solution to your baby's issues and really, really support their immune system. Okay. Emma, is this making sense? Let me know. Um, okay. So things that we can do to help the immune system and who was it? Somebody asked a question. Um, Azota, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. It looks really pretty. I'm sure it sounds prettier when you say it. Um, but Azota was wondering how, um, how can we improve baby's microbiome and therefore, um, supporting their immune system. And you know what, Azota, you hit the nail on the head there because that is one of the best things we can do to support your immune system is to support a healthy gut. Because, newsflash, if you haven't heard me say this before, about 70% of your immune system is in your gut, okay? So if you have a dysregulated, unhealthy, or leaky gut, then things that means things are getting through your gut that shouldn't be getting through and then 70% of your immune system is right there. Its job is to attack foreign invaders, right? And cause this inflammatory response to help healing. But when things are getting through that shouldn't be going through, your immune system is gonna go crazy and go into overdrive. And then that's when you're gonna start seeing all these symptoms that you might already be seeing in your baby, right? So one of the best ways to support your immune system is to support a healthy gut and, um, and heal it and seal it so it's not so leaky. And that involves, you know, having a nice, healthy microbiome, eating the right things that can heal your gut and everything. So I know, Azota, you asked, like, okay, what can I do <laughs> to do this, right? Um, and it's all stuff that um, it's really all, like, very simple. It, I, I do not like complicating nutrition because um, it is so simple. The idea of it is simple, like actually implementing it and making it part of your lifestyle is the hard part. And that's why I'm here to like guide you. Um, but you know, the, the, what to do is simple, whether you're talking about gut health or supporting your immune system or healthy skin or whatever, eat a lot of veggies, <laughs> eat a lot of colorful veggies, eat a lot of variety, eat a lot of diversity, right? So that's a diversity is such a key to having a healthy microbiome. Um, eating a lot of different color, eating some really good plant-based fibers. So when I say fiber, I don't mean um, like a lot of, you know, like whole grains and things can be good for you, but I want the majority of your fiber to be coming from like fruits and vegetables, mainly vegetables, okay? So fiber is great for your gut um, and fiber will um, 
get digested and turn into what's called short chain fatty acids, which feed the probiotics in your gut, feed the bugs in your gut and help actually heal and seal the gut wall. And then also short chain chain fatty acids are found in some good healthy fats like olive oil and coconut oil. So those sort of things are great for you. And I will be talking about, um, just give me a second. (laughs) So this is all whether your baby, if your baby's on solids, like awesome, give them this kind of stuff. If your baby is still just exclusively breastfeeding, I'll talk a little bit about how this applies to you and your breastfeeding baby. Okay. Um, What else? Oh, and good bacteria like fermented foods, things like that. Um, getting outside in the sun, not only is vitamin D really, really important and good for your gut, but just being exposed to dirt and pollen and like whatever microbes and things in, in, your, in the yard or in the park or in the forest or wherever, like getting fresh air and vitamin D is really, really important um, and can help you make a really nice, healthy microbiome for your baby and therefore supporting the microbiome, right? And just like Azota said, supporting their microbiome and reducing inflammation all at once, okay? Um, all right, what else do I wanna talk about? Again, if you have any que- any more questions, let me know. Maybe I'll just jump into, oh, and then in addition to, so Azota, we're talking about improving the baby's microbiome by like eating those sort of things, but also we can do that by removing certain things from our diet and lifestyle. Removing stress, <laughs> doing the best we can to reduce stress, right? Um, One of my favorite tips and one of the things that I do since I have a seven month old is if I'm going to nurse her, I go into another room usually sometimes, you know, there's stuff going on and I need to be there um, with with my older kids, but I'll usually go into another room, not bring my phone and just sit in quiet, focus on breathing, being present. Um, So that is one of my favorite tips for reducing stress. If you're a nursing mom, those are your opportunities throughout the day to kind of hit a reset. And I, I get it. I have to, I have a four-year-old and a five-year-old at home. So it's not an excuse. Okay. Um, if I can find a few minutes of quiet with my kids at home, then you can too. All right. So nursing is a good, a good way to make that happen. So avoiding gut killers, we're saying. So I talked about like some things that you can add in your diet that can help support a gut, your gut. And then now, um, avoiding gut killer. So stress, number one thing. Um, Processed foods, sugars, all that kind of stuff. We all sort of know that. Um, Easier said than done usually, right? So reach out if you're like, ah, I just don't know what to do. Um, Antibacterial. So right now, um, hand sanitizer is like huge for good reason, right? Um, But just any, and so I guess, let me talk about COVID for a second then. Um, COVID is a virus, not a bacteria. So you don't need antibacterial everywhere. Um, because antibacterial things are for bacteria, not viruses. And what we have in our gut is bacteria. So we don't want to kill off the bacteria. Yeah, we want to kill off the viruses. So soap and water, no antibacterial. Okay. So, um, so lose that stuff. All right. Any other questions? Let me know. Am I making sense as far as like how we can support the gut, which in turn is supporting the immune system. So once we can heal and seal the gut, there are less of those foreign invaders going through in the leaky gut. And so that 70% of your immune system isn't going into overdrive there, right? And if you've listened to partaken in the baby skin solution course, um, the mini course before, then you've heard about the leaky skin, leaky gut cycle. So they both lead to inflammation. Um, Okay, so what else did I want to talk about? Leaky skin, leaky gut, um, immune system supporting. So Azota, um, if you want to hear a lot more detail on this, definitely, I think I already sent you a link, sign up for the Baby Skin Solution mini course. It's totally free, starts September 1st. I do it every like six to eight weeks or so. Um, And then Crystal was just like, tell me everything you know about eczema and how I can help it. (laughs) So um, Crystal, hopefully some of the stuff in here was kind of helpful. Um, so, you know, just being aware of what topical steroids are doing and being careful if you are using them, um, looking up some anti-inflammatory foods that you can add into your diet, start thinking about an anti-inflammatory lifestyle as well. Oh, and I said that I would talk about how this applies if your baby's not on solids yet, right? So certainly anti-inflammatory foods, if they're in your breast milk, they will pass through to baby, especially, especially if you are upping your healthy fat intake. So upping your omega-3 intake, that is going to really, really help baby. If you've been around here for any amount of time, you've probably heard me say um, omega-3s about a million times <laughs> for a good reason. So that kind of stuff certainly passes through your breast milk. Um, as far as like those short chain fatty acids and good bacteria that I talked about, um, 
breast milk is the best thing for those, okay? So breast milk already has um, certain short chain fatty acids and already like built in prebiotics and things to feed your baby's belly. If your breast milk is designed to create a healthy gut for your baby. So um, we want to optimize your diet. So, you know, maybe there's a better ratio of healthy fats. Maybe there's some better proteins that um, really support baby's gut health, some anti-inflammatory foods. But uh, so, you know, when you've got a sensitive baby, you really need to pay attention to like optimizing your diet so you can optimize your breast milk. Um, but like bottom line, it is the best thing for your baby's gut. So tangent, when I hear doctors say to stop breastfeeding, to give baby's gut a break so it can heal. I'm just like, uh, formula is not really going to heal baby's gut unless your baby is like really, really in pain, like major blood issues, like, like stuff that you, you just like cannot nurse anymore until you get things figured out. Then yes, formula will, you know, probably give their gut a bit of a break, but it's not going to like actually actively heal their gut. Okay. So optimizing your diet to optimize your breast milk is really ultimately the best thing to heal your baby's gut. Okay. Um, all right. Lastly, I had a question from Jackie, which is a really good question. She was saying, um, can you actually heal your gut to, um, to make sensitivities, um, to cure sensitivities, I think is what she said, to make sensitivities, food sensitivities go away? Can you do that by just working on your gut and healing your gut? Or is it better to, um, to continue to eat small amount of that food to build up immunity? You can probably find... Um, different, have different people say different or like find different arguments for, for either one. And I think that's because it all sort of depends. Um, if you ask one doctor, one thing, they might say, um, yes, you need to just eat small amounts to build up your like quote unquote immunity to that food. Other people might say the opposite that you need to completely cut it out and, um, and, and heal the gut. So here's my take on this from like all of my background and training and experience and everything. This is, this is my opinion. I am not a doctor, okay? But know that if you ask your doctor this, their training and experience is different from my training and experience, which is different from um, a functional medicine doctor's training and experience, which is different than a clinical nutrition, right? So we all are coming from different training and experience. So I wouldn't want you to take just my word for this. And I wouldn't want you to take just your doctor's word for this. I want you to, you know, take into account like like multiple sets of data until you sort of figure out or feel what is right for your specific situation because everybody's situation is different okay water break all right so real quick again jackie's question was um can you heal your heal your gut and cure sensitivities or is it better to keep eating small amounts of the food to build up a like quote unquote immunity to the food i think it really depends um, so first of all, we know there are plenty, plenty of studies out there that say um, being introduced to um, highly allergenic foods like the top eight allergens early on in life is the best way to prevent allergies later on in life. So that is certainly something that's well studied, well known. Um, and there's plenty of ways that you can do that. There's like even now they have like um, one, two, three food, or there's a few different products out there that have like ways to, to introduce small amounts of those allergies to prevent them um, from be allergens to prevent them to become allergens later in life. Hopefully I'm making sense. <laughs> um, so we know that. Okay. But this is um, when it gets kind of tricky. Okay. And when you, like, I'm all about listening to your intuition, getting the information and the knowledge and, you know, maybe getting some stories and experiences from outside of you, but listening to what feels right for you. Okay. So if your baby has like a true serious allergy, you're working with an allergist, they're helping you figure out when and how to reintroduce foods. If your baby doesn't have any allergies at all, like no signs of allergies, you're probably not here. <laughs> but um, if they don't have any signs, then yes, you certainly want to introduce those foods early on. So your baby's body knows how to um, how to deal with them, right? If your baby is already experiencing symptoms to certain foods, whether you know what foods those are or not, um, you need to, again, this is my opinion <laughs> from my experience and training, you need to remove that food from your diet for at least some period of time so that you can work on healing your gut, right? Um, reducing that inflammation, supporting your immune system, um, all of those things so you can work on those things without like constant 
um, constantly introducing this food that's triggering this inflammation and these reactions, right? So you need to remove that food for a certain amount of time. Don't just remove the food and then be like, okay, we're good to go. Um, you probably want to remove the food and then work on, and this is what I talk about in the baby skin solution program. It's not just, it's not just ch- driving yourself crazy with what you can and cannot eat. Okay. It gets, it's, it's more than that, but in a good way, <laughs> it's easier than that. Okay. So it's removing those foods that are bothering baby and then working on healing and sealing and supporting the gut so that yes, I'm legal. Like I cannot say that I'm going to cure your baby of sensitivities. <laughs> um, I can't make promises like that. Even a doctor probably couldn't make promises like that. Um, they would get in trouble for it, but um, it will give you and your baby a much better chance of being able to eat those foods later in life if you do the work of um, of healing their guts, healing and sealing their guts, supporting their immune system, all that kind of stuff. So, Jackie, my like short answer to your question is, um, it will give you a better chance to quote unquote cure those uh, sensitivities if you remove the food while you're working on um, improving gut health and then you can slowly reintroduce it, okay? Does that make sense? If you have, so that's if you have sensitivities and tolerances, like um, nothing super very serious, remove the food, heal the gut, and then the, the goal is you can reintroduce the food and be fine with it, okay? Some people might have to live with certain food sensitivities um, throughout their life and you know that's, that's it. But the, you have a really good chance of being able to um, be cured of those things if you have a super healthy gut and a super healthy, strong immune system. Um, if your baby doesn't have any allergies, then yes, you want to introduce those allergens um, early and often. Okay. If your baby does have allergies, work with their allergists. And if you want, you can work work with your allergist to support baby, work with me to figure out how to optimize your breast milk and how to optimize your lifestyle and diet and everything. Um, So together we can create a healthy baby and a happy mama. All right, so I don't see any questions here for the live. Again, if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, let me know if you have any questions and I will get back to you. And I will pop the link for the Baby Skin Solution mini course in the comments here. Like I said, it's totally free. Um, It starts September 1st, so it's kind of, it feels like it's forever away, but it'll be here soon enough. Um, So if you want like more details on this kind of stuff, certainly, definitely, definitely, definitely sign up for the free course. Like what do you got to lose, right? It's all right here live in the group. It's free. Um, Totally worth it. All right. Well, I will see you ladies another time and have a great day. Bye.